I felt guilty for Rachel's destiny, as if it got rotten by my cursed presence on board. Maybe Ahab was just looking for more souls to rear his throne in hell. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Nantucket. There once was a bird from Nantucket. No, I'm not going to go into that. But I'm your host, the Birdman Otis Falcon. We um, covered this bad boy here earlier. A couple of days ago, as a matter of fact. I really enjoyed it. I figured I'd do like a follow-up video at the very least. Because all I was able to show you guys was kind of like the the side quest. What I wanted to do is off-camera, I went off and I did a little bit of leveling and some more seafaring whale murder, unfortunately, <laughs> to get Ishmael up to prestige level 25. If you guys remember from the first video, the very first main quest mission does open up to you at 25 prestige, which is um, Rise from the Ranks. Um, if you want other captains to share rumors about Moby Dick with you, you have to become a respected whaler, prestige 25. It is a calm and slow night. Your ship held her pad, and you sit at your desk, filling up the ship's log under the dull red light of an oil lamp. The wood of your cabin keeps creaking, as if it were whispering the water's secrets. Suddenly, an hand shyly- oh, excuse me? What do you mean, uh, an hand? I think that should be a hand. Shyly knocks on your door. Who goes there? You walk to the door and open it. The plot thickens. Your man stands at the door, holding his hat in his hands. Captain! I'm sorry to disturb you, but I have some information for you. It is about the Rachel. Was that the ship that saved you after the Picot got sunk? It is what happened to the Rachel. Rachel, just hearing that name spoken aloud makes your heart knocks hard in your chest. It happened during our last stop on dry land. We were at the end, and we ended up drinking with other sailors. He stops for a second. Try to remember the words he probably rehearsed before knocking at your door. Well, the Rachel is missing, Captain. She left Nantucket and set sail to Honolulu to deliver some goods, but she has never got there. We thought you might want to know. Thank you. You may return to your quarters now, so this will give my morale, my crew, plus two morale. Um, this will give them plus ten morale, but I also got to give them a hundred dollar reduce. How much money do I got? I've been hunting for a while, so I think I should have some pretty decent cash. Can I find out anywhere? I got twenty-seven hundred. That'll give me a plus 10 of morale for everybody? Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty, good job, boys. You close the door and walk to your desk. A shiver runs down your spine. Was it Moby Dick? Was the white devil looking for you on the Rachel, thirsting for your blood? I mean, you're the only survivor, so Moby might want to get us, man. So my journal's been updated, we got plus 10 morale, and we lost $100 in dues. So, let's see. We'll, we'll look at the quest here really quickly, but um, let me get to this um, area first so that we could... Get some goods. Um, I have two pending quests at the moment, and most of them entail me to kind of come all the way over here. So we have to go all the way down South America, all the way up here. So that's going to require quite a significant amount of um, supplies for that. Um, which we should be able to afford. The problem is, can I, like, you know, carry enough over there? And, like, we have to find, like, another city or another town over there so we could, you know, port and refuel and resupply. So we sold 16 Blubber for 381. I was hoping for a bit more, but hey, what can you do? Spain sells the Florida colonies to U.S. for five million. That seems like quite a bit of a bargain for the U.S. right there. Got Florida for five mil. Romantic poet John Keats killed by tuberculosis at the age of 25. Oh my god, what a terrible time to be alive, man. So, let's see. Let's go on over... ...to here. So, we'll do... ...this route for now. Hopefully we could find something along the way, too. And... Go for it. Okay. How many days are left over for you? March 19. So we're almost done with the hunting of the whales here. So that's not too bad. Oh, wow. There's a spot over here in Koro Rareka. Oh, my God. These places I can't pronounce. <laughs> Which is very common for me. All right. Um, sail away. So we're down here in the bottom of South America. There's no places to port. Again, if we're looking for the Rachel, it'd be up to Honolulu, so we have to go straight up through there. But I want to find, like, another port town around here, so I have, like, a place to resupply at. With a lot of water? Oh, yeah, of course. So, unfortunately, our water might be going bad, so we have to throw one of four away. We threw three, that's more than I really was hoping for. But I'd rather just throw it away than, like, you know, risk getting dysentery. I'm not sure, I, I think that clears up after a while. Because I think one of my guys earlier got, like, chlamydia or something. Don't ask me how we got chlamydia on the ship. But uh, he did. In the days after your la your latest harbor visit, you notice that one of your crew members starts to look tired and sickly. Oh no, this is no good. 
50%, he's just tired. Hunter Leandro got syphilis. And Leandro got malaria. I guess now we know where they got it from. They went to the harbor town and they got the freak on. And they wound up with syphilis. Man, we might have to go to Honolulu after all. Well, let's get this whaling area at least completed. And there it is. So, no, no, don't sail away. Discovered. Finn ahoy! Your lookout yells as he spots a fin in the distance. Maybe the whale sighting rumors about this area were true. Lower the whale boats and check the area. So, I've never been up here, so I'm not sure what type of whales I'm dealing with. Hopefully nothing too tough. Not gonna tell me just yet. So, Ishmael's at 19, Silas at 19. So, this is my first fight over here. We should go prepared. So, I'm taking all my bad boy hitters here. So, Silas, all of my fighters. Ready for this one. We have a sperm whale! Haha, <laughs> yeah we do, 8 HP. A newborn one at least, so that's good. Not sure how much blubber you give me, but I guess we'll find out. Let's roll, we have windy, so no effects, very good. And this should be enough for a kill. Silas can do the hunters. He's dead. And what do we got? We got 10 blubber! And 5 food from that bad boy, huh? Well luckily we've been using a bunch of supplies to get here. So we have room in the cargo. Perfect. And that should be that mission complete, right? Discover a new whaling area. So we get $200 in Peterhead, all the way over here, once we return back and report. And apparently, let's see, you're active between June 21st and September 21st, so we may... Oh, actually, like in about a month from now, we'll have some more hunting to do over here if we want to. We'll come down here, and at least that'll be my port area. I will, I guess, recover and refill from there. And then we'll take the path down through here and see if we can run into the Rachel. But at least this will give me like a area to chill at, yeah. It's really terrible, there's no like no port areas over here too. Maybe somewhere up there, but maybe that tip coast. Could be. Well, at least Honolulu isn't too far from there, so it's fine. Enter the harbor. Let's see what you guys have here. So a new issue, the newspaper's available. We got 332. Hmm. Seems like the blubber sells a bit more here than it did at, um... Inter, whatever the hell that place in South America was. And we could get upgrades here too, perfect. So this will be my next big area after Nantucket and Peterhead. Uh, Bolivar defeats the Spanish army in Carabobo, leading Venezuela to independence. And Palembang is conquered by Dutch troops It will be part of the Dutch East Indies. And majestic display of artifacts from ancient Egypt in the Egyptian Hall to London. So what jobs do we have here? We gotta be or have 25 carrying potential, we can do that one. Deliver goods to Peterhead. Well that's pretty good because I do have to turn in that quest, so by going to Peterhead, I'll just get 400 bucks straight up, some experience, and I could also get my rewards from the other quest. That's not too bad. And over here, we have to unveil the Amber's destiny. The Amber was declared lost days ago, and her destiny is shrouded in mystery. She was traveling from Honolulu to Horta, but she never reached her destination. So I'll, I'm going to accept both of these here, and maybe we could, like, you know, cover two in one go. And for you, I need 25 cargo space, it does seem. So what I'll do is that you here will research for me... Um, I'd like to get like better view on the ocean. This would be faster travel if I'm right. Let me get better view on the ocean. So standard lenses will give me 25% field of view, 90 days for 200. Let's do that one. Okay, so September 20 or September 19, you guys will be ready. Cool. Let's uh, sail away. And let me handle the save here, and we'll go down that path towards the Rachel and see what that. I guess things that you guys told me to worry about, or at least avoid for now, is all about. So if I die, I don't have to necessarily start again. Um, save. Oop. That's fine. Alright, so... Let me mark the Rachel as uh, our thing, which is going to be down through here. And we're going to Nantucket. So this will guide me all the way towards where the Rachel might be at. So pause, and see how this goes. I mean, I doubt it's gonna run me into Moby Dick already, right? Assuming Moby Dick's even in the game. It's like a figment of um, Ishmael's demented imagination at this point. Alrighty, we also have Kororeka here. Blubber sells pretty low down there, oil's pretty low too. Not sure what kind of buildings they have. I would like to go check that out, but... I'm a bit too lazy. Honolulu, 31. You see, Honolulu gives you good money for that blubber. 31, that's really good. Most of the places over here be like 20 or something. Nantucket, how much do you give me? 26, yeah. Honolulu's where it's at. You got that blubber, you bring it on over to Hawaii, man. Oh, here we go. Uh, your lookout spots the ship you were looking for. 
It seems they are struggling at sea, trying to defend themselves from some creature attacking their hull. So this should be the Rachel. Action stations lower the whale boats and prepare to fight. Let us get closer and try to hit the creatures with our harpoons. This will make it so we get one prestige, $100, and my attack is successful, assuming this hits. So because we have a special ability or we've leveled up one of my harpoon guys to get, I think that's the fasten ability, we have another option here. So let's do that one. Our attack was useless, their hull was hit hard, and the ship is rapidly sinking. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, that wasn't the Rachel after all. While inspecting your ship's hold, you notice some wet boards. It looks like one of the water barrels is leaking. We lost one water. So that was just a random event. It wasn't a Rachel. I thought it was a Rachel. Oh. Alrighty, guys. So I'm doing a bit of a cut forward here. Uh, to give you a long story short, I did indeed get wrecked in this fight. Um, I kind of figured out why, though. Essentially, even though the moment you got 25 prestige, you could do this mission, it's not advisable, as you guys told me. You should either have, like, you know, maybe an upgraded boat, a couple of upgrades here and there, or more importantly, just people that are actually leveled up. Um, you can level them up by just grinding whales and stuff like that, and random missions. I found it best, though, because I had some prestige and money already, to go back to the town and actually hire some level 5 individuals. So I'm gonna give this a try with level 5 people who have more HP than my original crew had. Let me go into, um, game mode here. And this will be the Rachel event. Ship ahoy! Your lookout yells, diverting your attention from your task. You walk on the main deck, immediately gazing upon your lookout. He leans out of the crow's nest, checking for your presence. Then he stretches his arms, his arms out, pointing larboard. Pass me the spyglass. The Rachel stands out against the horizon, half sunk. The foremost, the foremast moves at the ocean's mercy, waving its sail like a white flag. Sharks indiscriminately tear off pieces of boards and corpses floating near the ship while the few survivors try to fight them back. So, this is going to be a, a fight against sharks. Apparently, I have a 50% chance of either distracting the sharks or attracting even more to me. Alrighty, so we got to resist for six rounds. You just have to survive this one. Ishmael has to be part of the fight. Um, because it's like a main quest. The problem is that sharks love to gang up on Ishmael, because they know if they kill him, it's game over for you. They tend to ignore everybody else and just go straight up after Ishmael. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Kawhi, because he's got a lot of HP, obviously. This might be risky, but I'm going to take Roy, just because he has evasive maneuver. I'm going to take a roll with this crew here, and hope for the best. Um, they're all attacking this turn. Okay. Um, let's start off with ourselves. We got evasive maneuver, which is great, or protective maneuver. Go, here's what I could do. I could bring one of them down right now, and only take two attacks this turn. But, we're still taking two attacks. And with my luck, they'll probably gang up on Ishmael. With my prior knowledge, I could say, well, they love to get, gang up on Ishmael, so I'm going to protect him. Ishmael, okay. So, going after Roy, bleeding, that's going to happen. They went after Ishmael once, we resisted it. They went after him twice. You see where Roy could come into play really well? I just wish I had more HP on him. If I did, this probably would be a lot more manageable, because I know they're going to gang up on Ishmael. That guy's diving underwater, which gives me at least one free attack off of that. So now, we roll, and we could bring one of those sharks down, or we could once again try to protect Ishmael. And I'm going to say, we can lose Kawhi and Roy, we can lose Ishmael, so you know what? Protect him. With any luck, they'll once again gang up on Ishmael. No, they're going after Roy now, because they know that I'm protecting him. And Roy's dying from bleeding next turn. So we were able to protect Ishmael for two turns. Now we're wide open again. And when one less person has spread damage around two, I think we've lost. Especially because we lost the guy that we couldn't afford to lose because he was the one protecting Ishmael. So now, as you can see, we are... He's submerging. This guy's going to attack from underwater, and he's going to attack regularly. So, we gotta bring one of them down for a fact now. And we can go after the underwater one, so there you go. We'll bring him down, we'll take one attack here. Go after Kawhi, please. You're diving, and of course, Ishmael is the target. Jeez Louise. Round number four. Our crew, our crew member damage went to negative 20 as well. Alright, you're diving, and you guys are attacking. Let's roll. Gotta bring you down. You're the only one I can't attack at this point. Go after Kawhi. Ishmael, of course, of course, dude, come on. I might actually, if they could, like, just leave Ishmael alone for, like, two rounds, 
I can even take one attack and bleed one turn. I just need two rounds. Okay, both of you guys are diving. Oh, dude. This would have been the perfect time because, ew, man, I could have avoided damage completely, but this guy's attacking from underwater. And you guys were going to dive, so I don't have to worry about your damage right now. But more than likely, this guy's going to attack Ishmael. And the next turn, we'll... What did I tell you? What did I tell you? So now I'm in round number six. And even if I wouldn't get attacked with Ishmael, they're all attacking this turn. I'm dead. I still think I'm going to die at the end of the turn because of the bleed out. Is the problem. What are the chances they don't attack Ishmael? <gasps> oh my god. God, I actually won. I just lost one guy. Dude. I'm I'm glad it didn't give them their round. Like, it basically ended the fight after my round only. Because they were going to take one more a strike right now. I was going to die. Oh, boy. You guys were not kidding about this first fight. I'm glad. Well, I mean, I got wrecked myself off camera. So I decided to go back and hire some stronger dudes. As a matter of fact, the only person that really made a difference in this fight was... Roy, really. I hired this guy over here in the middle. And I don't think he even took one single strikes of damage for this one. So Roy was my baller for this fight, oddly enough. Wow. That's a really, really like difficult fight to start off with. So take um you know, take heat from this video. If you're playing this game, don't go into this fight early on. Ignore it for a while, get yourself leveled up, get your ship upgraded, get some higher level people, cause as you saw, oh my god. Well, let's take this food over here. A lot of food. Close it up. As the battle's adrenaline rush dissolves, surrounded by shark carcasses and human corpses, you feel gutted. You look around, desperately looking for any sign of life. You notice a man in the distance, warily fighting to stay afloat. Your men recover the Rachel sailor from the sea, bringing him aboard the ship. One of your men brings the sole survivor to you, covered by a blanket. He is a young man as pale as a ghost, shaking because of the cold and the shock of seeing his mates chewed by deadly jaws. You order your men to leave you alone with him. Where is Captain Gardiner? Is he dead? Sir, the young sailor takes a deep breath, trying to steady himself. I'm sorry, sir. Gardiner is not the racial's captain. He left the command months ago. The young man starts to panic, pressured by your rough manners. All I know is that he left the command to avenge his son's death by chasing the white whale with a crew of cutthroats. Somebody heard it was heading towards Africa, but I really do not know, sir. I felt guilty for Rachel's destiny, as if it got rotten by my cursed presence on board. Maybe Ahab was just looking for more souls to rear his throne in hell. Quest completed, finding the Rachel. As Gabriel leaves your cabin, you turn your attention to a small wooden chest you recovered at sea. It contains the, it contains the Rachel's contracts and blueprints. Uh, so a new object's available in inventory, Rachel Scantling Blueprint. Naval Engineering, a character placed in the hold can use his working skill attribute instead of crafting to fix the ship. If the character's working attribute is crafting or if given to captain, crafting value is plus three. Whoo boy. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up here for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Nantucket. Um, yeah. Don't go into that fight early. Get yourself leveled up first, because you're gonna get a, have a hard time. I barely just survived this one right now. That was like some... Falcon luck right there. I'm going to catch you guys next time.